Good morning and welcome back to everybody joining us again. For those of you new here, thanks for taking a look. For those of you guys that are subscribing, thank you, greatly appreciate it. I'm Steve, gotta do that every time, from Corsair Trainers. Today we're gonna be talking about situational awareness, a little primer, a little starting place. Stay tuned. All right, so discussing situational awareness. It's really important that we have some. If you guys don't know what that is, it's basically knowing what's going on around you all the time. If you don't know what's going on around you, you don't have information. If you can't get information in, you can't work your little OTA loop, which we'll get into later, and you won't be able to make decisions that can help you and your loved ones. So the other day, I'm on Facebook, see a little thing come up, kind of stole a picture, that way I could use it. I thought it was a really good thing. Basically, I'm gonna try to take the pictures I got in front of me, put them up on the screen so you guys can go along with me here. So the question was, where do you sit when you go into a restaurant? So you got a basic little restaurant here with a kitchen, some bathrooms, a little hostess station, a waiting area, and then the dining room where you would sit. So the idea is when you go in there and the hostess says, hey, where do you wanna sit? You pick a place that gives you the maximum amount of situational awareness. So we got all these tables here and go ahead and take a minute, take a look at it and pick which table and which chair? So for instance, the table closest to the hostess station, like table I, would you chose seat one, two, three, or four? All right, everybody got that figured out? Good, all right, so let's move on. So when you're thinking about this, we'll try to make sure the picture matches. You wanna see the routes that people are gonna take, the, the lines of drift, the areas where people are gonna be wash, walking. So for this purposes, put some arrows on there. There's gonna be people coming in to go in the dining room. There's gonna be people hung in a right to go in the waiting area. A little further down, people are hang a little turn around that corner there to go to the bathrooms. And then the kitchen's gonna have a lot of people coming in and out of it. So looking at that, look back at the chair you picked, at the table you picked, and how much of that can you see? Now right off the top, right off the top. We don't wanna pick any of the chairs that are number three. Why? Because your back is to everything, to every single thing. And we don't wanna sit like that. We can't see what's going on, we can't see what's coming, we can't see what's going on around us. The next picture shows in the dining room, tables A, B, and C. And then the little red lines are kind of the spots that are blind spots. For this purposes, we're gonna say the hostess station's kinda of low, you can see past it. So basically where those red lines are shows you the areas that you can't see from those seats to include D, E, and F, seats number two. So we probably don't wanna go there. It's probably not the prime location to sit. Now going in a, kind of a backwards order here, if you absolutely had to sit at one of those tables, these are the, the chairs that you wanna pick. You wanna pick on E and F, chairs number two, because you can see the mostest. And then for tables A, B, and C, chairs one or two give you the most that you can see from that portion of the room. It's not ideal, but if you had to sit there because you want to make a big deal, you got the kids with you, all that good stuff, you should pick one of those tables to sit at. All right, working our way down and to not the bestest, but not the worstest. I like saying is this, sorry. Looking at the thing, if you got table D, E, or F, D, seat number two, E, number one and F number one. Why? Because they give you the most amount for where you're at. You can see the most stuff there. The issue with the room is you're kind of in the center of the room, so your back still do a lot of the stuff there. Going further down, G, H, and I, any one of those seats there, number two in either of those tables at G and F, one for H and I, and four for H. Those give you good spots. Why don't you want like I, two, or four? Because you're too close to the door and everything, your reaction time would suck if something came up from there. Now moving down our list of good places to sit, D1. D1 gives you a really good view of the entire place, your back's to the wall, you're going, well that's kind of paranoid, we'll touch on that in a minute. So D1 gives you a pretty good view of everything, you can kind of see what's going on everywhere. It gives you the ability to gather information so that way you can make a decision that could affect you or your loved one's safety. Now, the last one here. I know some people argue with me and that's cool. I'm, I'm good with that. But for me personally, if I had to pick the one place to sit, it would be G, golf, one and four. 
From there, I got the most view of the room. My back secure, it's in the corner. I can see everything going on pretty much everywhere. There's a little spot by the bathrooms you can't see. You can't really see in the kitchen, but if the door is open to the kitchen as people are coming in and out, you can see all the way back to possibly the back door, depending on what's in there. So why is this important? Because again, you wanna be able to get information in. You wanna be able to see as much as you can and be able to know what's going on around you. That's part of situational awareness. That's knowing what's going on around you. It, the seat that I'm talking about, the one that I like to sit in, we used to call it the gunfighter seat. There's other names for it now. And if you look up gunfighter seat on the internet, all you get is motorcycle seats. All right. So the idea is you're in the prime position to be able to deal with anything in the room. You can see everything going on around you and nobody's gonna sneak up on you. Now you go, well, okay, who's gonna sneak up on you? Ask Wild Bill Hickok. There's a reason he got killed in the saloon when he did. And that's back when guys used to gunfight for reals. So if you're the kind of folks that carry around a pistol with you all day long and you don't take this into account, you're lacking in your training, please take it into account. Biggest thing about situational awareness nowadays is putting these things down. I do it sometimes myself too. We're sitting at the restaurant and I end up getting on there and not really paying attention to what's going on. It's something we all need to work. All right, now when you're talking about the situational awareness and where you can sit, you're gonna notice something strange when you start doing it. There's pretty much two types of people that have their head up and looking around when they're in a restaurant or in some kind of large area like that, a, a group thing. And some of you might find this weird. There's, like I said, two kinds of people. There's bad guys and cops. Little quick story. I was in an event back in Ohio. I'm in a bar, I'm looking around. I notice this other guy's looking around too. And after the fourth or fifth time of making eye contact with them, I walked up to him and said, hey man, what agency are you with? And then I told him what agency I had been with. And he was shocked. Young kid, you know, been on the force a couple years. There's two types of people. Good guys and bad guys are the ones that mostly do this. Everyone else has kind of got their heads down doing stuff or too caught up to look around. Take some time, consciously think about it, try it out. You'll start to notice that there's certain folks that are looking around all the time. All right, now a little announcement. We've made over 60 subscribers. Thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate it. it gets me motivated to keep going. I appreciate your comments. Hit that little like button, hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff. Share it with folks that need to hear it. Let me know you're out there. Give me ideas for what you guys want to talk about. We'll figure it out. If I don't know the answer, one of the other fellows might. If none of us know the answer, we'll help you find the answer you need. All right. As always, stay safe.